Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial today, I'm gonna to be reviewing Typing Mind as an overall general review. I had a lot of questions in the last video regarding Typing Mind, its benefits, feature set, so on and so forth. How it compares to ChatGPT. What are the differences? Why don't I just use, why did someone ask me, you know, why don't they just use ChatGPT or ChatGPT Plus, right? What are they benefiting from using uh, Typing Mind, which, is, which essentially creates a, a, essentially a better UI for ChatGPT with some added functionalities. I'm gonna go through the main ones that I use and that I find most beneficial, but we also give you a preview and, and a link where you can go and see the full feature set and feature list of Typing Mind and the upcoming features on their roadmap as well. So first off, this is Typing Mind. This is the UI. It's gonna look like ChatGPT, of course, with an enhanced UI aspect to it. And before I jump into that, I'm going to also link this. This is the docs documentation for Typing Mind. But just so you guys have an understanding too, I wanted to also show you the channel log here and talk a little bit about who's behind Typing Mind. His name's Tony Din, I believe that's how you pronounce it. And he's an indie developer and he's actually made some other tools within the community and such as, you know, Napper HQ, DevUtils, the app, Blackmagic and so forth. And his most recent project is the Typing Mind app. And so you can go follow him on Twitter if you want to see any more updates regarding the tool. He's pretty... Pretty great, really great at actually giving updates and providing a lot of information in terms of what's released, listening to feedback, so on and so forth. But what's cool here is that he'll have in this channel log, this is where you can see all his updates that he posts. So there was just a recent UI change actually as well. He's added support for another language model called Claude 2, but we can get into that a little bit later. So he's pretty, pretty consistent in terms of updating the channel log here. As a quick preview, this is a, the full feature list. Right, and again, I'll link to this page in the video description. Everything you can use with Typing Mind. There is a premium portion of Typing Mind, but the benefit here is that you pay once for a lifetime license. And the way the pricing model goes, just to get that out of the way, is that there's a few different tiers. The higher the tier, the more licenses you have access to, but it's a lifetime license. The way Typing Mind works is it utilizes your OpenAI's API key. So you're paying just for the usage, right? Bring your own key kind of aspect or the kind of a model here. And if I go back to the UI, you can see I have my license activated. This is my API key that I generated specifically for the Typing Mind application. I've used about $30 worth of OpenAI tokens or credits within the last four months or so. I've been using this, I believe, since March. So this is off just one license. I have multiple licenses for other devices as well. And you know, the support has been great. So some of the few things that I do like about it is simply just the folders feature. So I can categorize my chats into different folders, delete them, rename them as I feel. This just keeps it a little bit more organized as in ChatGPT just lists out everything. You know, it's kind of cumbersome in that way, but I can actually save these and these sync across my other devices that I have the same license key for. So if I'm doing something now on this desktop, I'll have those chats also on say my laptop that has the same key. Some keys have multiple, you can use it on multiple devices. You just want to go check out the pricing section here. Let's see if I can find it. The pricing section, which should be, actually, I think it's right here. Yeah, so you have a one-time purchase. You have a key. It tells you what the actual pro features are, and I'm on a premium plan, so on and so forth. So you have your additional options to purchase a custom branding package, right? It allows you, and not only, it, it comes with others, other license uses. You see, I also have the abilities of 10 users on 50 different devices. So you can look around and see which one works for you. You can also custom deploy this locally or just have a custom deployment slash you know, a private chat interface for your team or your business. If you'd like to do so as well, this was just recently released as a feature, kind of how like business units or different companies are building their own kind of chat GPT interface internally for their business unit or their organization. So you can also do this as well with Typing Mind, utilizing their UI enhancements to the experience. So again, yeah, I like the folders aspect of it and I can come back to my chats here. I can actually star some of them too if I wanted them. So for like this example, I can star it and keep it up here. It just helps with my workflow. If I'm working on something now that I don't want to go dig for, I could always come back and go into the the studio. This, you know, it's, it's self-titled based on the, the conversation I was having, but I could always come back to those chats. I can also create more folders. I don't think there's a limit currently right now to the amount of folders you can make. I haven't really had any problems with that, but that's just something that keeps my workflow a lot cleaner. So it sounds like something small, but it really does help for sure. 
then in terms of the actual section here, the main section here, so we have the ability to change your profile. So you can add like your name, your occupation, just more details about yourself to actually give that data to the, the model here. If you want them to actually converse with you on a more personal level and actually talk to you using your name, so to speak, that's kind of what I've seen the seen it been used for here. But some of the, the main things here, we have the model selection. So chat GPT, so GPT-4, right? I have access to GPT-4, but they also have GPT-4 32K. If you have access to the 32K token length, of course, we can swap between 3.5, even 3.5, 16K tokens. So I do have access to that. You can also, they also have integrated with Claude or Anthropic's largest model, which is Claude 2. You can add custom models if you know how to do that sort of thing into the interface, which is pretty cool. And if we come back into this, you can actually give system instructions. So initial system instructions, which you can kind of do in chat GPT, you know, with extra prompting, but you can also do this in the playground version of, of open AI, which uses the different models as well. But this is kind of bringing that into the, the chatting interface, all right? So I save all my settings. You can actually have it stream the words, you know, as you're, as you're submitting a, a prompt and getting output back, you can actually see it typing live if you'd like to. So I think ChatGPT does that, but you have the option to turn that on or off. And then of course you have the settings to change, you know, context limit, temperature, your, your presence penalty, frequency penalties. I haven't really messed with this too much, but you really only have access to this if you're using Playground within OpenAI. So what that is, I go to playground.openai.com. This is just like where you can go ahead and test different prompts, use different models, right? Outside of the ChatGPT models and go back to even older models like Text DaVinci and things like that and play with these settings here. This is not accessible on the ChatGPT front end interface. So what Tony's did, he's actually in incorporated that into the chat interface and has these options here if we choose to use it, which is cool. Something new that came out was plugins. So plugins, right now we have web search, image search, simple calculator, this JavaScript interpreter, and you also have the ability to add new plugins or create your own. And there's going to be a large increase I see in plugins coming to this is this was just recently released, so it's in beta. So we have a lot of those basic functionalities you can do in ChatGPT, non, the non-plus subscription right now, right? But you can also envision that, you know, if you're paying for ChatGPT $20 a month, you're gonna get access to those third-party plugins or first-party plugins that are gonna be incorporated into there. But I can also see the plugin database just growing exponentially for Typing Mind as well, since you have the ability to come in and create your own uh, I'm not sure about the creation process for ChatGPT and their plugin environment or marketplace and how that process looks, but it's cool to see that another interface like this has a capability without having to pay for ChatGPT Plus on a monthly subscription, right? Again, this is a lifetime license. Something I did review in my last tutorial was looking at AI characters. So essentially it's like prompting the model to have a certain persona and you can do this in ChatGPT, you know, again, with like your initial prompts. But this allows you to have them saved in the and kind of just have a library of all these different characters or prompts that you most frequently use. So I have about two of the custom ones in here. One of them I shared in my last video, but you also have these different personas that you can also edit and make changes to and save them as you see fit. So essentially these act as like the system instructions, right? You are a software developer, you develop software programs and applications using programming languages and development tools. So it'll give you more of that, you know, programmatic software developer answers based on the prompts you're feeding it. So it has a bunch of them here. Again, you can add custom ones as well. And I just recently enabled the feature to share these. So for example, like this, this LLM model that I have for SEO that I reviewed in my last video, talking about how it uses a bunch of different personality rubrics and skill change to get a better output when you're having a conversation about SEO related on SEO related topic, I can actually just share this, right? It gives me a link and any typing mind user can import this into their typing mind experience. They don't have to go copy and paste it, right? It creates a seamless experience for when we're able to make or have users create those custom AI characters or, you know, give them a role of certain knowledge and how you want those, the output to be delivered to you. So I really like that. The ability to share just makes it that much more kind of like open source shared community style when it comes to just the creation of these specific characters. Some of them are pretty generic. I also have this code farm one that I got from a discord that also gives you better output when you're asking more code related development questions. I have some pretty good results with that too. So that's pretty nice. So for example, if I just change it to the LLM model for SEO, you can see it says you're now chatting with 
and then the name of the actual character you gave it and reset that. And then of course, pretty standard, we have some, a prompt library. So instead of going to all these different other sites and collecting all the prompts you'd like and, and aggregating them into a Google sheet or a Google doc, right? You can save them and have them stored on your typing line account. And this should actually sync across your devices. If you have them, if you have that option set, which I'll show you. So you have your prompts. I don't have any custom prompts myself. I should add some in here based on some of the tutorials I did in the past. We also have custom prompts. So these are, I mean, sorry, community prompts. These are ones that I made from the community and you can choose to use these. You can actually contribute prompts via GitHub or Google form, which is pretty cool. So that I mean, these community prompts can continue to grow. You can use this. So what it does is it actually for this one to act as a job interviewer, you can, it gives you this basic prompt here and then it tells you where you would want to fill in the variable. So in this case, the position. So SEO manager position, if you want to put that there. So like SEO manager, right? Position. And we'll get some output there. It tells you the model, the system instructions, the things you want to look at, the plugins that are enabled. It's pretty cool. So then, yeah, it'll, it'll just continue with that conversation, right? So let me go ahead and reset this. We'll just start a new chat. I can delete that. They also just recently added the feature to upload a document. So using either text or a PDF, you're limited to the model that you have access to. So like it says here, the 3.5 model supports up to 4,000 tokens. 54 can support up to 32K tokens if you have access to that model. I don't have access to that version of GPT-4, just the regular GPT-4 8,000 token limit. So you can uh, upload text here, whether it's JSON, CSV, HTML, or just regular text, or you can upload a PDF. Now there's separate applications that are just built off of uploading a PDF and being able to converse back with the information in that PDF with the chat interface using, using one of these AI models. So this is pretty cool where you can upload it here and it'll read the text, right? It'll ensure that nothing fails before the, the actual command is sent through. So that way you can have a pretty positive experience interacting with, you know, Word documents, spreadsheets, anything like that. Taking a look at some of the settings. Yeah, so I have auto generate title for new for new chats, which is standard. Auto suggest relevant keywords for each message. You can do that too. I select my selected my search suggestion to be Google, but they actually give you the ability to choose other search engine suggestions here. Some keyboard shortcuts, which is pretty nice. And then this just tells me some of my data, right? The storage stats, my local chat. So a lot of this is stored locally. You can also have it stored in the cloud. I think they're having a Google Drive integration coming separately or soon allowing you to sync with your Google Drive instead of using, I believe their servers or having it stored locally, right? So you can import even conversations from OpenAI. So if you wanna continue that into Typing Line, which would be pretty cool, or you can even export this as well, export all your data. So you have some pretty good flexibility there to do that. And of course you have the channel log. You can quickly get to that channel log page here, which is pretty awesome. Something I also noticed and I like, it's also a feature set I have this example here where I gave a, a prompt to give me a list of domain ideas for a blog intended to write tutorials, comparisons, demonstrations, and reviews for home studio equipment, including audio interfaces, mixers, microphones, and more. And when it lists out domains, so when a prompt like this is asked to give domain ideas, they actually have this feature where you can check the domain right within the prompt. As with ChatGPT, you just get the list. So I ran the same command to see what the output is. I didn't know if they changed it or made an update to ChatGPT. And you may be able to do this in ChatGPT Plus, but then you gotta pay $20 a month. This is included just in the, the feature set of typing mine when you pay one time. So I can actually click check domain. It'll open up instant domain search right in another window and see if that is available. And then what this does is just give you options of where you can go buy that from a domain registrar. So it's just more of a seamless experience, you know, one less thing you have to go do and copy this and paste it into another window. Not that much work, but again, it's just making this experience a lot quicker when you're doing this sort of research. So that I definitely enjoy. You can also search your chats. I'm not sure if chat GPT can do that. I don't, it doesn't look like you can. You can also search your chats, right? Whatever's popping up. So home studio, right? If that's what I was looking for, it's coming up with one chat because it found out that's it. It actually searches not just the chat title, but any of the text or the conversation it searches within the conversation as well that you were having in that chat of any relevant keywords, right? That you're searching for, which is pretty cool. You also have the options here at the bottom. You can change your output language, right? The tone, voice, writing style, the format, which is pretty cool. So step-by-step. Step. So instead of saying, can you give me like a generous or exhaustive guide on how to do something, you can actually set the format here right? So you have that option. If you want a specific format, step-by-step, -step, an extreme detailed guide or a listicle format, FAQ format, you can do that 
if it's a more of a content related project or just based on the, the prompt you're writing, right? So that's pretty nice. And then going in here, you can actually share your chats now. So you can actually share it at a free online service with typing mine. You can share it as markdown. So if you want to share your whole chat in a community on a Facebook group, or whatever, you have some options here as a, to export as a PDF to even share online to another service called sharegpt.com allows it's a free service that allows you to share chat GPT conversations. So you can do that within typing mind as well. You don't miss out on that. The library, again, is just a quick button to get to what we were looking at before with a prompt library. You can then reset the chat so you can replace only edit the message without generating the rest of the conversation. So if you don't want to, if you just want to replace the message, you can update your prompt and then regenerate, or you can actually fork over the chat and start a new chat from this specific area. So even if you have if you're kind of, for example, Let's go into something I was creating here, a schema markup generator. I was just playing around, seeing how well it knows, it knows code. And I had all this, this conversation earlier before, but if I wanted to just say, reset the chat and then fork the chat from a specific conversation from a specific point, I can do that as well, right? If we wanted to keep that same prompt. So maybe I wanted to keep this and then reset, fork the chat over, right? And start something new. We also, so let's go back here. And of course you can always just start a new chat there instead of going in the top left button. You can also use voice. So speech to text input, if you'd like that sort of thing, I use a web API that's free and open AI whisper, which uses just your tokens. So if you have an API key, it should be able to grab and use that, that whisper model from open AI. Some of the other features I like that they recently set up is the ability to expand the window. So let's go back into this chat. I can actually hit over here and decide to expand it take it full screen. It's a little, it's a little feature, but I think it's really nice to be able to go, you know, if I want everything centered a little bit wider or full screen when it comes to the prompting area, so to speak. So I do, I do like that option here as well. You also get the ability to see your estimated cost, right? With a chat. So you don't miss out on, on that. I don't even think, yeah. So chat GPT, this is free. This doesn't use the open AI, but I find that sometimes, you know, chat GPT is always down when you most need it. So since this uses OpenAI's API, it's using a different model right from the API and not ChatGPT specifically. You could go do more research on how to understand that, but yeah, so you can actually show the total cost or the context length if you'd like. I like to see the estimated cost just so I can see, hey, I only spent four cents to get this output here. And then this is just my total output. I've, I mean, my total cost using the API key that I've had linked to ever since I registered typing mine, as I mentioned earlier. So yeah, this is just a quick overview summary and just how to use Typing Mind and how I use it and some of the features I like. Like I said, there's definitely a lot more here, as you can see. I went through widescreen support. There is a Mac OS app, right, as well. Domain check integration, we saw that. Code pen integration, which is pretty cool. So code pen, if I go back to that schema markup generator, let's see. Yeah, it allows you to open up code in code pen if you'd like, which is pretty neat for if you like that sort of thing. Everything else here pretty much went through a good, most of the, the main points here. But like I said, if you have any frequent, any questions, something I didn't go over in this video, this FAQ is pretty, pretty good in terms of like understanding what the differences are and what the benefits are with typing mind. So for example, a lot of people ask, do you need to pay for chat GPT plus to use typing mind? No, you don't. You just need your open AI's API key and you can see how to do that. What's the difference? So you can see exactly what that is chat. GPT plus and chat GPT AI API offer the same model and same quality. So you can, you can view this and that's exactly what we're using. We're using the chat GPT API essentially for within typing on and chat GPT plus just gives you access to like those additional plugins, I think higher uptime, but when you're using the API, you, the, the uptime is much greater when you're using these other tools that allow you to link your open AI's API key, All right? So this is a good, a good source, a good page to review and get some more information that I may have not covered on typing mind. I plan to use this long term. I've already built it into my workflow and how I do things. And it's been great so far. Also, if you're interested in purchasing typing mind, you can check out the link in the video description below. It is an affiliate link. So I do get a small kickback that does help support the channel. If you decide to sign up with typing mind and buy their lifetime license through my affiliate link. So that'll be much appreciated. Definitely don't have to do that. Wanted to make a disclaimer there and let you guys know. So again, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.